I've been pondering this. Is it possible to have a phone be both affordable and take great photos and videos? Well, today we're gonna find out by comparing the iPhone SE and Google Pixel 6a. This is the iPhone SE. It starts at $429 and is essentially an iPhone 8 body and camera hardware with an A15 Bionic processor from the iPhone 13 Pro. And here's the Pixel 6a. It starts at $449 and includes the same Google Tensor processor from the Pixel 6 Pro. Unlike the iPhone, it doesn't use an old phone body from 2017. It's a new body, though the camera specs are similar to last year's Pixel 5. Both the iPhone SE and Pixel 6a use Apple and Google's computational expertise, respectively, to capture photos and videos that exceed their camera sensors and lenses. But how do they compare to each other? Let's find out. So the first thing we should talk about are the camera hardware. The iPhone SE has a single selfie camera and a single rear wide angle camera. The Pixel 6a has a single selfie camera, but two rear cameras, one wide angle and one ultra wide. Now each of these has a single selfie camera, but the Pixel 6a, I can go from a wide view to an ultra wide view with the selfie camera. There's a one and a 1.4 button. On the iPhone, I just have to use my arm to get that extra width in there. On the Pixel 6a, the other big difference over the iPhone is gonna be the modes. We have a night mode called Night Sight, which the iPhone does not. We have portrait mode. We have camera for just taking regular photos. We have a video mode with the options to do slow motion or a time lapse. There's also a couple things like panorama, a photosphere, as well as access to Google Lens. On the iPhone SE, we have a time lapse mode, a slow motion mode, a video mode, a photo mode, portrait mode, and a panorama mode. The thing that's missing on here is night mode. All right, let's talk about video on the Pixel 6a. I have a few different settings here. I can shoot in HD at 30 frames per second or 60. I, I can also shoot 4K at 60 or 30 frames per second. I cannot shoot 24 frames per second on the Pixel 6a. So on the iPhone, if I'm shooting video, I can shoot HD or I can shoot 4K. If I'm shooting 4K, I can do 60 frames per second, 24 frames per second, or 30 frames per second. On the Pixel 6a, I can shoot JPEG or I can shoot JPEG and RAW. On the iPhone, I do not have the option to shoot RAW. One of the nice things about the Pixel 6a is it has modes for video stabilization. There's a standard mode, a locked off mode, an active mode, so if I'm moving, it'll help smooth things out. And there's a neat thing called cinematic pan, so if I'm panning from left to right, it'll keep that nice and smooth. I'm back from shooting and I'm impressed with both phones, though I am leaning heavily more towards one which more on that in a moment. By the way, if you wanna learn more about the Pixel 6a and how it compares to the Pixel 6, check out CNET's Pixel 6a review video by my pal and colleague, Lisa Edicino. So let's take a look at some of my favorite photos from the iPhone SE and then some of my favorite photos from the Pixel 6a. Montage time. All right, so do you have a favorite one so far? Let me know in the comments, but let's take a look at some photos head to head from each phone. All right, I'm gonna start with uh, these two photos of a cappuccino. Uh, this is taken outdoors. The small differences I do see is the Pixels photo has a bit more contrast. Look at how dark the, the coffee drink is compared to the iPhones. The other thing I notice is the color. Uh, the white balance is slightly different. It looks a little cooler on the Pixel photo and a little warmer on the iPhone photo. 
Now these photos are ones I wouldn't normally include in a comparison like this, but uh, by the way, this is my pal and my camera guy, uh, Celso. And what I was shocked by with these photos is how different he looks in the iPhone photo compared to the Pixel photo. So in the iPhone photo, let's just start with his t-shirt. His t-shirt's black. It looks almost like a dark gray. His hair, which is dark with some gray highlights, looks like it's all gray. It just looks like he aged 20 years in this photo. In the Pixel photo, his t-shirt is much darker and more accurate. It's black, but not solid black. If you look at the camera he's holding, that's solid black. And his hair, that's how his hair looks in real life. It's dark with some gray highlights, that old classic salt and pepper daddy look. One of the most obvious differences between the two phones is the fact that the Pixel has a second camera with an ultra wide angle lens. These two photos you're looking at are both taken with the main cameras on each phone. But clearly you could see that the buildings, the tops of the buildings are cut off in both photos. Now on the Pixel, I can switch to the ultra wide camera and that's what this photo is. So now you can see the top of Salesforce Tower. You could see the entire on-ramp for the uh, bus terminal. But in the iPhone, I have no way of expanding that framing. So one thing both of these phones have in common is neither has a dedicated telephoto camera. So in this case, both phones rely on digital zoom. What I did for these photos was I zoomed in digitally as much as I can on each phone. You can see in the Pixels photo that it's able to zoom in a lot tighter than the photo from the iPhone. Neither photo is great. I would not post either one of these on Instagram. This is purely for you guys. Let's move on to some medium and indoor lighting shots. These are typically where cameras at this price point start to fall apart. Right off the bat, the thing that I see between these two photos is the texture of my cat's fur. Uh, in the Pixel photo, her fur has much more texture and much more detail. It looks very natural. In the iPhone's photo, it looks more muddy, it looks a little soft. When we go to 100% resolution, you can see pretty quickly how much better the photo from the Pixel is over the iPhone. The iPhone's photo looks a lot more processed. Let's move on to portrait mode. Apple and Google are no stranger to portrait mode. They're uh, two of the best companies that have the best portrait mode, but they're also very different. So right now I'm looking at my pal and my colleague, Claire Riley, on the Pixel's photo of Claire, the background is very blurry and she's very sharp. And there's a nice sharp line of cutout around her. On the iPhone's photo, uh, the background's not as blurry, but you can increase the blur on the phone. It can match the blur of the pixel. It just chose not to. And notice on the iPhone's photo, the cutout inside her elbow, <laughs> It didn't blur the background there. It's, you can see the tables are in focus, whereas the background on the Pixel photo is out of focus. So it kind of messed up on the iPhone. Here is my pal Andy, and no, we're not all fashion models who work here at CNET, but many of us, Claire and Andy, clearly look like they are. The cutout is really good, I think, on both of them. Notice the little counter thing he's leaning on and the iPhone photo is out of focus even though it's on the same depth of field as where he is. So on a real camera, it would be in focus, right? And on the Pixel, it does that, right? Let's punch in to 100% on both of these photos. Yeah, oh wow, you can really see the difference there. I think this looks really good though. All right, let's move on to night mode. This is unfair, kind of like the ultra wide comparison because one phone has night mode. The Google Pixel has what's called night sight and the iPhone does not have night mode. On the Pixel, I used night sight to take the photo and it made everything brighter and more even. Uh, if you need help finding some of that, you can see the night sky looks kind of like a dark blue. The trees are not cast in shadow. You can kind of see more detail in that. By combining multiple images together, it's reducing image noise, so therefore it's not having to apply as much noise reduction. The iPhone's photo is not combining all those multiple images. Instead, this photo has lots of noise reduction, so the details of the leaves in the iPhone's photo are very soft, very muddy, very painterly. Look at the signs in the background there. You can't really read them in either photo, but you can at least see the word parking at any time in the Pixel photo. On the iPhone's photo, it just looks like a, like 
someone wrote it and smeared their hand across it and it's all smeared out. Let's move on to perhaps the most important camera, the selfie camera. And let's take a look at selfies from each of these phones. The iPhone's framing is much tighter than that from the Pixel. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the iPhone's selfie camera does not have a very wide field of view. I am much more out of focus in the iPhone photo than I am in the Pixel photo. Um, again, you can see it's really boosted the brightness of the shadows on my face. On the Pixel phone, the shadows on my face make me look like a raccoon. So photos are just one aspect. Let's take a look at some of my favorite videos from both the iPhone SE and Pixel 6a. Video montage time. All right, and let's take a look at videos side by side from each phone. And I'm gonna start with the Pixel 6a. Google does such great computational work for its photos, it's just not able to apply a similar level of computational work towards video. So in, in this case, this is probably what's closer to what's coming out of the camera on the Pixel 6a without any of that processing. So we do see a lot of image noise, we see a lot of aliasing. You can see the iPhone's video right off the bat has a lot more detail. Colors are more punchy, there's more contrast. I don't see as much aliasing or image noise. And you can see, even though we're zoomed in, we see more of the texture of the wall. Another takeaway, kind of like the photos we were doing earlier, is the fact that the Pixel can digitally zoom in a lot tighter than the iPhone. Neither looks fantastic, but I see there's a lot less image noise on the Pixel's video than there is on the iPhone. Both phones offer video image stabilization. However, on the Pixel, there's a lot more options you have over the controls for that. The downside to video stabilization on the Google Pixel is you can't shoot in 4K. You're automatically cropped down to 1080. Because what it's doing is it's taking that video and cropping in to keep the video stable as you go. Both look pretty good. Even though I think the Pixel 6a has better video stabilization, I think the image quality in the actual video looks better from the iPhone. Again, I'm seeing a lot of image noise in this video. Like, look at the details of the trees and the leaves compared to the iPhone's video. So, after all of that, I do have a favor, but let me say this. For phones that are under $450, both of these are the best you can buy in terms of capturing photos and videos. But after doing this comparison, I'd grab a Pixel 6a over the iPhone SE for its cameras. It's got an ultra wide angle camera and that night side mode, which to me means a lot. Now I do think the iPhone SE does capture better video in terms of image quality, but the Pixel 6a is still pretty good. Now. I wanna hear from you. What do you think? Which one would you choose and why? Also, we're doing these videos every week covering Apple stuff, so let us know what you'd like us to cover. Lastly, do all the YouTube things, like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Thank you for watching.